Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be practicing the fundamentals of NPM. NPM stands for Node Package Manager, and it does exactly that. It manages packages and dependencies and their own dependencies as well. But unlike the name suggests, NPM can manage dependencies for projects that are not Node.js based. You can be uh, just running a, a normal um, project that has a an HTML, CSS, JavaScript file, and you can initialize NPM uh, there and br install packages using this NPM. Um, you can even be using another framework like a PHP framework or a Python frame, uh, framework, and you can still use NPM there. Uh, like any other package manager, NPM helps us install and manage dependencies and their versions and uh, um, a couple of other things. But what gives NPM the advantage and makes it grow faster than the other uh, package managers like uh, pip for Python and Composer for PHP is that we get JavaScript, which runs on the, on, on the client as well. So we can use JavaScript on our client and we can get packages using NPM even if we're not using Node.js. Now, there's a ton of good blog articles and videos about NPM, but in this video, I'm going to try to make it to the point and only uh, show you the stuff that you actually need 90% of the time. Uh, I wouldn't call it the bare minimum, but I would call it the functional part of NPM. Um, I'm going to try to hit this uh, perfect amount of information, not too much and not too little. Now, um, before we start, we need to make sure that we have uh, Node.js installed, which uh, comes with NPM shipped with it. Um, the version doesn't matter, you can install the, the current or the latest stable version. Um, now, uh, yeah, after you install it, we're going to start. Uh, I already have Node installed, so once you install it, you can go to the desktop or anywhere really. I apologize, by the way, if you can hear the drilling outside. Um, you can run npm-v to uh, make sure that it's installed. And there we go, I get a version number. And uh, let's create a project. I'm going to use my favorite example of creating a website and call it website. Let me close this. Let's open it in VS Code. And now I'm going to be using the uh, integrated terminal in VS Code. Now let's create um, our basic files. So an index.html and an index.js. Um, let's initialize our npm project by doing npm init. And now this is going to ask us a couple of questions. Package name, we're going to say enter website version, enter description, you can say anything. So my personal website. Entry point, yes, it's index.js. Test command, we don't have one yet. We don't have a git repository, so enter. Keywords, you can say website, web dev, whatever. Author, you can put your name. I'll put mine. License, I'll put MIT. And it says everything is okay, and I'll click enter, and it creates this uh, package.json file, which has all the information about our NPM. Uh, package and we'll later hold more information once we start installing packages and uh, There is another way by the way if you want to avoid all of this. Let me clear the console You can just run npm init with the flag uh, Dash y which I believe is yes, which says yes to everything and it just uh, goes uh, creates this you can as well um, look up this, you can do npm config set, I believe, and you can set some defaults, like your name and uh, license, and each time you do npm init y, uh, it creates a project with those defaults. But I'm not going to get into that, because it's not very important. Okay, let's, um, let's populate uh, our index a little bit, let's just do doc tab, and let's give it a title of website and a heading of my website. Um, now let's say I wanted to install uh, Bootstrap, which is my favorite um, uh, CSS framework. Now I can go to, where is it? Bootstrap, getbootstrap.com. I can download it and link it, or I can um, link it using a CDN, a content delivery network, using this script tag, um, this link tag and the script tags for the JavaScript. But a better way would be to actually install it using npm. So let's do that. Let me clear the console. Oops, oops, again, clear. 
Okay, we can install it using simply npm install bootstrap dash dash save so that it saves it to our dependencies. Um, I believe they've changed it and we don't need to use dash dash save anymore we'll, and we'll see. So now it creates this node modules file uh, folder which holds all our packages which right now only has bootstrap. So now we can simply go here and do a link ta uh, tag and we just link node modules uh, yeah slash bootstrap dist css and the bootstrap min minified now before i save let's actually um let's actually open this revealing explorer let's open it you see how it looks like and now we're gonna save and link the css and if I refresh, and there we go, you see the style has changed, indicating that uh, Bootstrap has been linked, which is really cool. It's, it was really easy to do. In a, in a second, we got Bootstrap going. Now, um, once our project gets big, we can check what packages we have and any problems that we might have by running npm list, uh, which lists uh, the packages in our project. And this throws uh, some, well, it's not an error, but it's complaining that we need these dependencies for Bootstrap, which is really cool. It gives you information about your dependencies' dependencies. So let's install jQuery and Popper.js. Now we can as well install multiple packages with one in one command, and we can use this um, uh, shorthand uh, notation, I guess, npm i instead of install. And let's do jQuery and popper.js. And now it's gonna install and save them to our dependencies. And it's done that, and there we go, we get them here. And uh, by the way, these uh, version numbers, this uh, caret sign means that it each time you install the packages using this package.json, it will install uh, the latest uh, minor version here, but it will never go above this. So for example, if bootstrap 4.3 comes out and you run npm install, it's gonna install it. But if bootstrap 5 comes out, it's not gonna install it. Um, and if you remove this, it will only install this version, 4.2.1. And if you do this, you just give it uh, an asterisk, it will, it will always install the latest version. So this is important because uh, if you put this, because new versions might have like major changes which uh, can break your code and even though you don't need the functionality from that version. So it's important to keep these, uh, these carrot signs and if you want to change, you do it consciously. Um, now let's say uh, there's a cook package called uh, live server and I want to install it because it, I don't want to each time when I make a change, I need to reload. I want hot reload. Uh, we can use live server. So we can install that. And I want to use it for all my projects. I don't want to install it on each project. So what I can do is I can install it globally on my machine and use it all the time. So let me clear the console. And we can do that by running npm install dash g for global. And let's do live dash server. And now it's going to install this package actually on my machine. Uh, so it's going to be available everywhere. So these are the global packages, the ones you have always on your machine. Um, once it's done installing, we're going to check that it's installed. So we can do that running npm list and give it as well a dash g. Um, and I'm going to, actually I'm going to run it and then see what it outputs and then explain why we need to add another flag. Um, ignore these warnings, I've been seeing these warnings about FS events for a while and um, see it in, it prints out all of this which is a, a dependency tree for each dependency we get their dependencies as well so it goes really deep um, so what we can do to avoid this we can do npm list dash g or even locally and add this flag depth and give it a depth of zero which will now give us just the, uh, the top layer, just our dependency without any of their own dependencies, which is uh, what we uh, intended to do. Okay, so we get all our dependencies that we have globally and we get live server here, so it's installed. So now we can use it. 
so we can now just do a live server and it will serve this index HTML and if I make any change to the HTML let's add an S here and save it reloads automatically and we get this S here which is cool so let's stop that and let, let's say I wanted to install uh, another dependency uh, which is um, Webpack which is a tool you use to bundle your JavaScript and CSS and minify them and, uh, and a, a ton of ton of other things now this is my JavaScript let's say in my JavaScript I had a function um, uh, that's called say hi and it, it does exactly that it console logs um, hi and now let's say I wanted to minify my JavaScript I don't want to leave it like this now of course assuming I have more JavaScript than this I can bundle that using webpack but I will not install webpack as a dependency because once I bundled my application and uploaded it to my server I don't need webpack to already be in the node modules folder I didn't, so this is a developer depend dependency or dev dependency I only need it during development so what I can do is that I can do npm install webpack dash dash save dash dev which is going to save it to my developer dev, dev dependencies so when I uh, build a production ready uh, website that will not be included in my node modules which is the, the point of dev dependencies now let's I'm going to do something uh, here and I'm going to include my JavaScript but I'm going to include the file that's going to be created in a moment so let's do source and let's call this bundle.js uh, which we haven't created yet and we will in a moment so okay so webpack is installed and it's here in the dev dependency uh, dev dependencies um, array now let's use webpack to bundle our javascript by running the command webpack index.js and the output should be in the same directory and we call it bundle.js and the mode set the mode to development and don't worry if you know you don't know what webpack is i'm just using it as an example see now it created this bundle.js which has some webpack stuff and has our script here so now that we link that this will work just fine and we can use the same command but instead of development we can say um, production which is going to make our file much smaller so you see um, it's now 3.8 kilobytes and now it goes less to a 1 kilobyte and it's minified which is super cool so now we've installed it using a uh, thing now we can even delete this um, by the way you see a lot of dependencies here they're not our dependencies but they are our dependencies dependencies so for example webpack will need browser uh, browserify and a couple of other things that are here and acorn and stuff like this so what's cool about this is we can always delete this I hope I don't get the permission error that I get in the S code deleting stuff so we can always delete that and just run npm install again and it will install the packages so we just need to share our actual source uh, code instead of sharing the packages as well now one thing I'm gonna open a new window while this is installing one thing you can do as well so if you wanted to install a specific version of let's say bootstrap you can do this let's say you wanted to install 4.0.0 you can run this command at 4.0.0 or if you wanted to install the latest version you can do a uh, bootstrap at latest which is uh, pretty cool so um, let's say I ran my boot um, my uh, webpack command right but that's not efficient I don't want to run it each time on, on write it each time what we can do with npm we can add scripts so let's call that uh, let's call that build our script build and it will be the same command so webpack um, index.js and the mode is development uh, de can't spell development our output will be here as well and it will be bundle 
Node.js and yeah I think this is fine and let's delete our bundle here and we can just run npm run build which is now going to run this command that we have here it says that we need the webpack cli by the way you need webpack cli i already have it installed globally if you had any problem with webpack i should have mentioned that you need to install webpack cli um i don't know why it's asking me to install it uh, locally wait our cli must be installed well it is installed let me actually install it as a dev dependency just to avoid anything. Uh, webpack, CLA, CLI. And by the way, dash, dash dash save dash dev can be replaced with dash uh, uppercase D uh, to save to dev dependencies. So now if I install it uh, on this project, I should have no errors. So let's run npm run build. And now this should run the webpack command without any problem. And there we go. So it ran this command without me having to write all of this again by adding a script. And you, you see you can extend this functionality further to add more scripts doing stuff that is relevant for your project. So you get our bundle JS here. So yeah, this is it guys. This is the uh, the main just the 95% of what of the commands that you're going to be using using um NPM, uh, I hope you learned a lot. Um, please let me know if you like this. Uh, like and subscribe and comment. Let me know if you have any problem or any praise or anything. Again, I'm sorry about the drilling noise outside. Um, I had to record this and I couldn't wait for them to stop. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.